Welcome back to the Success Partner Podcast, and I'm your host, Daya Nape. So today I am so excited to have David Arenthal with us. David is also a coach, but he has a very different approach, different experience, and I'm just delighted to introduce him to you today. I'm, I'm glad to be here with you, Daya. Great. David, just give our give our listeners uh, wherever you want to start, personal, professional. We're just having a, a short conversation. What would you like to know? What would you like them to know about you? you know about me? Uh, I'm sitting here in Concord, Massachusetts, which is about uh, 15 or so miles outside of Boston. Um, I'm married. I have two children who have left the, left, left the coop um, as of this spring when my son graduated from college. Ah, congratulations. Um, thank you. And um, I spent about 30 years um, in sort of a combination of um, analyst and um, working for corporations. I started my career as an economist. Uh, I discovered I wasn't that good at it uh, and somehow found my way into uh, into marketing and strategy um, and uh, spent probably 25 years doing that. Uh, some of it was in uh, the US, some of it was in Europe. I sort of uh, did a bit in Latin America um, for a while. Um, so, um, yeah, so I have sort of a, a, a sort of a pseudo academic corporate. And, and now for the last four years, I've been a, a coach, both a leadership executive coach, as well as a career coach uh, for certain uh, people. Um, and I've enjoyed the transition. That's wonderful. Um, and I love the breadth of experience of you having lived in other countries. Tell us a little bit about the juxtaposition, if there is one, of doing this work in multiple uh, cultures. Well, I became very interested in international when I was, um, I would say, in my late teens. Um, and um, I went to college and studied economics. I um, went uh, and studied for a year at Trinity College, Dublin. Uh, when I was in college, TCD, uh, studied economics, he studied a little bit of international law, and I went to work for an econometric forecasting firm that also had a very large international um, representation. And I ended up working in the, the Paris office, uh, so I was able to improve my French. Uh, I ended up working at the OECD uh, for about a year, uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is based in Paris, and I went to graduate school uh, in international relations and economics at um, a program at Johns Hopkins uh, many moons ago. Whereas I went to work for American Express naturally because of my kind of European international background, I was sent to France, worked with the European uh, team um, for, for several years. Anyway, so it's been a long history. Uh, I've been back and forth to France a few times. Um, the last time was really during the dot-com boom and bust uh, several years ago. Um, where I was very involved in um, some joint ventures uh, with some um, private equity venture capital firms. Um, but I've been based here uh, for the last uh, 15, 20 years. Oh, I love that. I love that. So we have some similarities. I also did some um, international economy in uh, huh. undergrad, and then I did the international law certificate in law school. Oh. So everything you've told me sounds very, I didn't end up pursuing it so or too far. So everything you've said sounds very glamorous, but like, what is it like in real life? Well, I mean, some of it was very exciting because there is some benefit to kind of living the expat life. Um, uh, you know, we're paid well. Um, we receive certain benefits because we're out of country. Uh, we're in a foreign country. Um, very interesting group of people, um, you know, uh, you talk about it. it's a different kind of diversity, diversity of homelands, diversity of backgrounds. So it was a lot of fun. And spe I speak uh, French. I, I don't wouldn't say I'm bilingual, but I'm sort of between fluent and bilingual. Um, I used to be fluent in Spanish. It's rusty, um, but it's really interesting to connect with people in their native language. Um, so I enjoyed that. I certainly considered a career in international like Department of State. Uh, I'm not sure I would have made my way into the World Bank. I'm not sure my economic prowess was uh, good enough, although you never know, or the IMF. Um, but it's it's just, it's extremely interesting. And to be honest with you, sometimes sitting here outside of Boston, um, it feels a little boring. <laughs> okay. So tell me the, the work you're doing now. Who is your ideal client? What's What's been lighting you up? 
I work with professionals. Um, those professionals want uh, to either grow. Um, they're dealing with some issues that could be existential. Is this the right work for me? Um, am I an effective leader? You know, how can I advance more quickly? Um, I'm having difficulty with this transition. Um, I have a toxic boss, uh, which tends to, you know, be common. Um, I'm working too many hours. Um, I want to do something else, but if I do something else, I'll lose my income. And if I lose my income, how am I going to pay for college? Um, there's, there's many reasons why, you know, work is central to our lives. It's part of our culture and it's particularly central in, in this country. Um, and when we're not happy at work, which is both a place where we earn income, we find meaning, uh, and it's also a social institution. And I, you know, I think certainly the work from home has, has been a mixed bag, depending upon who you are. If you're, you know, if you're a parent and you're shuttling your kids back and forth, the flexibility of work from home is just brilliant. If you're starting out, um, if you're not, you know, a parent, um, there is, there can be a loss, a social loss from that institution. And Americans are not particularly good, at least culturally in general, at um, diversifying our social institutions. So it can drive some of what we've heard. It can drive the loneliness, the isolation, um, and boredom. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely saw a lot of that coming out. And you know, now things are, I don't know, in another state of flux. So, you know, are, are we going back to the office? Are we forcing people to go back to the office? Is it going to be a choice, a hybrid? What's, what's going to happen? Um, so you, what do you, is there a certain like level? Are you working with like leaders, middle management, brand new people? Um, the majority are managers okay. and one of their, one of their core challenges is, um, their effectiveness and leading people, mm -hmm. but they also relate that to the impact they make and their advancement. You know, I would say, um, as much as this may be a surprise, but at the end of the day, the, the, the primary um, issue people are having is they're not advancing as quickly as they want to. I see. So what do they need to do to advance more quickly? And when I ask, why is that important to you? I think there's two things. I think there's money. They want to earn more income. And, and this is sort of an understated reality, and that is their status. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, uh, as a species, um, status plays more of a role in how we feel about ourselves and the decisions we make than maybe we want to give it credit for. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some weight to titles and levels and things. I, I work primarily in the legal industry and the, the trend uh, to promote more non-equity partners or junior partners. And so that's not really a true partnership, but they have that name now. And so they are able to do better business development. And so that just that, that switch in title and label, of course, they've earned that. But it's not it's not what it means. It's not what you know, it's not a true, it's, it's a true more partnership. Yeah, it's yes. You know, I, you know, this may sound a little bit, um, uh, I don't know what to call it. Um, uh, I, I do believe um, that the the issue of status relates to um the need for humans to belong mm. uh, and be safe mm -hmm. um and the studies have showed that people in lower status feel less secure um, are more stressed live shorter lives um while we may believe that people at the top are stressed, which they are, sometimes it's a different kind of stress because they're in more in control and they feel more safe and like they belong because they have kind of the power. Um, whereas those who are at the bottom, it's kind of the opposite. Yeah, sort of a loss, of, like you said, loss of control or yeah. perceived control over what? Or protection from others around us. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you do for fun? Uh, my exercise, I used to, I was a, a pretty uh, avid runner. Uh, I ran competitively years ago. Um, I can't, I don't know if I can run anymore. Uh, I have some, some work to do um, because of a, a, a medial knee issue. Um, so I cycle now. Um, I pool run, which you probably never heard of. 
uh, I simulate running in. in I was gonna say I can imagine it. <laughs> yeah. um, so I do that. I like to cook. Okay. Um, I like to. I read a lot. Um, I I used to read a lot about politics and international stuff, mm -hmm. but today I I get so sick to my stomach that I actually have to be careful. Mm. Yeah. So what do you what do you prefer to read now? Well, to be hypocritical, I'm, I'm reading um, Autocracy, Inc. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, Anne Applebaum that just came out. Um, I, I know of her. I've read a lot of her work, so I was kind of curious about it. Yeah. See what's new. What's that? To see what's, to see what's new reflection. Yeah, I haven't seen anything new, It's although it, it is kind of outrageous. That's probably true. Um, I, read, I read some neurobiology. Okay. Um, I have some favorite authors. Um, who've written a few books recently. I, I tend to read nonfiction. It's funny. Um, I don't read much fiction. Yeah, same. same here. Same here. I've been uh, reading on up about artificial intelligence. Uh, oh, that. Oh, that. Yes. Yes. And up until recently, everything was like a pro, pro AI. And then now I've got the one that's not so not so friendly and not so pretty. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you reading on AI? Which I'm reading, the one I'm reading right now is... Um, the la I think it's called the last invention or the final, our final invention to the end yeah. of the human era. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. Uh, which is interesting. It was published back in, uh, 2017. Hmm. Um, but it's, it seems to be just now in my, in my mind, just now relevant. Um, and you mentioned economics. So I love the Freakonomics episodes, oh, yeah. especially ones dealing with AI, but yes, I stayed on and listened to several others. It's, it's very interesting. So, well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, David, for being here today. Um, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Well, I, I, I created Mach 10 Career and Leadership Coaching. Okay. My email address is d-e-r-e-n-t-h-a-l D -E -H -R -E -N -T -H -A -L, at mach10career.com. You can reach me also at 617-529-8795. Voice, by the way, I uh, fell ill when I came back from, I went to the Olympics I, oh, wow. when I was on the plane, I got ill um, from something that got passed on to me from my wife and my daughter. Um, and I had an upper respiratory, uh, terrible, terrible, um, nasty virus. And I'm, uh, still coughing. And that was, uh, on the 13th of, of August. So eventually uh, my voice will come back. <laughs> oh, David, I'm so glad that you were able to make it today and yeah. um, and, and get back out into the, the land of the living. It sounds like that was awful. Yeah. yeah. And you're yeah. doing well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us, um, this is interesting, you know, before we go, we're going to wrap up in just a minute, but um, that Mach 10, tell us, tell us the meaning behind that. Well, Mach 10 um, is about speed. And I, you know, it was a different... I was my partner, Rob, we were thinking about what to name the company. I said, well, people really value speed. So what about Mach? Mach, some number, I said Mach 2. And he, he was talking to his son and his son said, why not Mach 10? And I thought, why not Mach 10? So we became Mach 10 in career and leadership coaching. I, we also did do sometimes some marketing consulting, um, uh, although we haven't done that in a while. But we also kind of use that um, for some of the cons we have a Mark Ten marketing also. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. get to dust off some of that marketing yeah. skills. Well, yeah. well, we're as as small businesses, we're all in the marketing department as well. <laughs> you know, as as Peter Drucker once said, um, every at the end of the day, we're all selling. I think he said that. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, again, for listening to this episode of the Success Partner Podcast with Day and Nate. Um, please subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Really good to talk to you, Day. Bye-bye.